and welcome back to Banjo Tooie on the Nintendo 64. I am One Mile Sheep yet again, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing a little bit extra backtracking before we on head on back all the way to the brand new world of the game. Because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the final world. We are at the end game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, can you feel the excitement? I certainly can. Oh, it makes me feel all tingly inside. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Indeed. And uh, to start things off, we got a brand new Cheeto cheat to utilize from, uh, well, from the Cheeto pages we've collected during the course of our journey. And this here, ladies and gentlemen, is Honeyback, which basically breaks the entire game wide open because, uh, well, it allows us to rejuvenate all of our health. Every time we get hurt, our health will now slowly rejuvenate, rejuvenate, rejuvenate over a short period of time. So basically, Take Call of Duty, for example. When you get hurt in Call of Duty, you stay behind cover for a few seconds, bada bing, bada boom, your health will regenerate. That's exactly what this Cheeto cheat you does, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And it is honestly an absolutely fantastic time. And uh, a lot of people will consider this one to be sort of borderline flat out cheating. But uh, hey, the game gives it to me, so I'm going to utilize it, and I'm still going to utilize it even in the final boss, because uh, it is very helpful. Let's just say that much when it comes to the end game boss fight against uh, Gruntilda the Witch, because that's a very difficult boss battle. I'm not, I'm not going to go too much into detail about that for now, but trust me when I say that, it's a very, very tricky and uh, troublesome boss fight. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? But, uh, what, what, what say you guys we skip past this quickly, because this is, uh, you know, you've seen all these puzzles at this point, there's no need to sit through this another time. And there we are, so now we have opened the way to the next world of the game. And we've already been to the entranceway of this world, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, let's just see the laser beam commence, shall we? And if I sound a little bit different during the course of this video, it's um, <clears throat> it's largely because I am actually recovering slightly from... Uh, I don't know exactly what it was, but I, I had severe, severe throat pain to the point that I couldn't talk. And even now, it's a little bit straining in my voice to actually talk, so I may sound a little bit different. And uh, I do apologize for that, but I, I, I can't sit by for ages and just not have a Let's Play coming out, you know, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's killing me. It's killing me. I've been bored out of my mind not being able to do these LPs. What can I tell you? So, uh... Yeah, if my, if my voice sounds a little bit different and I'm, if I'm a little bit more quieter during this part or the next couple of parts, um, that's going to be why. I'm still slightly recovering, but uh, I finally got to the point where I can actually talk over the footage. It's just a matter of, can I handle, can my throat handle it? That's what I'm sort of hoping. And if you guys are seeing this video right now on YouTube, then it's quite obvious my throat can handle it, but... Uh, you know, that's, that's also a sort of reason why I haven't uploaded for a while. But anyway, heading on back to Jolly Rogers Lagoon, we need to talk to Tip Top by here because, uh, well, actually, we don't need to talk to Tip Top. All we need to do is actually lay on the egg and uh, hatch this egg using our ability we got back in Pterodactyl Land. And, uh, yeah, this will get us a fantastic jiggy. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? What can I tell you? Indeed. Mm. But it looks like Tip Top's baby by here is a little bit upside down, or tipped up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, you can't rage at me, Kazooie made that pun as well, so you can't just rage at me about that. But uh, yeah, just whack the baby and it'll go back up onto its feet and uh, crawl slowly into the ocean. What can I tell ya? Look at him sliding off all jolly like. Makes sense, we are in Jolly Rogers Lagoon, you know, you'd, you'd want the NPCs to be rather jolly, wouldn't you? Hmm, yes. But, uh, let's just grab this fantastic jiggy and, uh, get our ways out of here. Yes. And, uh, head on into yet another portion of Jolly Rogers Lagoon because, uh, well, we still have a little bit of extra content. Like, behind Jolly Rogers' actual shop, there is a little 
area that you might have seen me blow up previously. Go into here as Kazooie alone and you'll be able to glide across here using the ability from uh, Hail Fire Peaks and uh, pick up that fantastic Jiggy. Hell to the air. Yeah. And uh, this is all pretty much the last of the backtrack we're going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen. After this point, we're basically... We're basically almost 100% done with the game, you know, like the there is slight bit of backtracking after this, I believe, once we finish the final world, but it, it doesn't take that long at all, so, you know, for all intents and purposes, we, we're basically, we're done with collecting like, all the major MacGuffins, we're done with almost every single level of the game, but uh, if you head into the undersea so section of... Um, Jolly Rogers Lagoon and go into this one room. If you recall when we first visited this room, we couldn't really do anything in here. Well, now we can actually use Kazooie's split gliding ability, so let's just split up, choose Kazooie, and uh, there's actually a Cheeto pair just hanging in the balcony over yonder that we can uh, we can basically glide to and pick up, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And I do believe there is a way to MacGyver your way to get in this, this, um, this Cheeto page a little bit earlier. If you utilize like the clockwork kazooie egg, but um, honestly, considering I had a backtrack to this level anyway, I figured I might as well just uh, wait until I do all the backtracking and get as much of it done at once, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Because, uh, I don't know, it seems more efficient to me, you know, just to do all the backtracking I can in one fell swoop and then uh, progress onto the next level after that's all done, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but I digress. But with that, that is all the backtracking we're doing for this part, so now it's time to head on back to the wasteland. And uh, as you saw, the giant laser beam from earlier on created a bubble! That bubble is the entrance way to Cloud Cuckoo Land. The final world of the game, and quite possibly one of the weirdest worlds in the game, if not the weirdest. Because we are going into the heavens, ladies and gentlemen. Our Jiggies will be the Drake Jiggies that pierces the heaven. I don't think that that reference really works, does it? Well, either way, Cloud Cuckoo Land, like I said, one of the craziest stages in the game. And simultaneously one of the... Well, not one of. This is the hardest standard level of the game. And it houses some of the most frustratingly difficult tasks for us to accomplish. But first things first, we have a not so frustrating task. But here, this here is Mr. Fit. Basically, during the course of this world, he's going to be giving us a set series of challenges in order for us to defeat him. And uh, when we beat all three of these challenges, he will give us a fantastic jiggy. The first one of these challenges is simply to do a high pole vault. So, um, as you can probably guess, we can't do it right now as we stand. We do need to get some power up, but fortunately, the power ups are too far away. And oh my god, the frame rate's terrible! Ah! Ah, oh, seriously, the frame rate in this stage is just god awful, and uh, yeah, the limitations of the Nintendo 64 really do show here. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? And this is probably a big reason why a lot of people would probably recommend the um, Xbox One or Xbox 360 versions of this game because uh, you don't have any of the slowdown in those versions. The, those versions are at uh, what? Oh, not 60 FPS. So they're, they're they're a buttery smooth 30 FPS, you know, and. It, it works, so uh, that's my recommendation with Banjo Tooie, especially. Get the Xbox versions. But, sheep, why have you been LPing the N64 version? Ah. Well, it's quite simple, random internet user. I prefer the controller, and uh, I wanted to show off the game as I grew up playing it. Warts and all. So, uh, there we are. But anyway, just basically destroyed those uh, rocks but they had to pick up a couple of, of uh, beans that we're going to be utilizing a little bit later on in the stage and pick up these fantastic jumping shoes to jump over the high pole vault and uh, yeah basically Mr. Fit's going to run off to his next point so we can actually run up to Mr. Fit and then do his next uh, mission which is actually a I don't know what the name of that race is called I remember back in like uh, my when I was really young back in school, I remember doing it. Um, it's like... Basically, it's a, it's a race where you, you have a bag and you have to hop your way to the end. I don't know what it's called, but... Uh, basically, we need to do that sort of race, and... Yeah, there's a power-up that we need to utilize that I do believe we'll be picking up in... Uh, yeah, in this world, I think. That, uh... 
we'll be needing to use. But for the most part, there we go. It's time to enter into the central cavern and uh, walk out of it. What am I doing? Why am I? What, what am I doing? Oh, I see. I see what I'm doing. I'll... But basically, as I was saying, that central cavern is going to be our central point during the course of this map. It's where we're going to be going to go from different areas during the course of this world. Basically, it's it's our main hub of this world. That's what I'm really getting at. But uh, if you see this and look down, there is a clockwork Kazooie egg sort of switch. Uh, there's, bas there's four of them located during the course of this world, and we do need to hunt out all four of them in order to uh, basically blow them up and explode them. But before we do that, let's head on over here and talk to this guy. This is George. If you remember in Hail Fire Peaks, we actually met his wife, Mildred, who uh, wanted us to find him before we brutally, brutally murdered her. And, uh, well, simply put, George here is afraid of heights and he's stuck up here, so we need to help him out. And actually us helping him out, well, let's just say it helps out with a massive side quest that I've been teasing us about all the way during the course of the playthrough. Because, uh, yeah, George got sent off to the wrong side of Hail Fire Peaks, and hey, what if you look at that switch, whoop de doo it's cooled down the water. What does that mean? Well, we can actually use that water now to warm up the pool in Jolly Rogers Lagoon for the pig kids. So yeah, we, you know, we're, we're, everything's slowly coming together in this world. And in this world as well, this is the point where all of the Jinjos, everything's going to start slowly being collected and you're going to start seeing a hell, and I mean a hell of a lot of your progress just jumping up really you're gonna be collecting a lot of items during the course of this but anyway as i was saying you need to use a clockwork kazooie egg on those clockwork kazooie switches in order to open this safe which as you can guess contains a jiggy i already know what the safe combination is anyway because uh well it's basically the date the rareware was founded but uh, i'm not gonna spoil that for the time being and if you if you jump into the pool of water there there is a globo and the globos can be a little bit trickier to find in this world specifically because they, they aren't really all that close to the mumbo huts. That's right, mumbo huts. I, plural. Um, I'll explain more about that when we get to it, but... Yeah, there's more than one mumbo hut this time around, and uh, it's something special. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? What can I tell you? Indeed. But yeah, like I said, this is a really weird world, and I just love the enemy designs of all this. Like, one of them is like this two-dimensional thing that runs at you with a giant sausage. It's like, what the fuck were they thinking? I love it, but it's it's mind-boggling to me, you know. But um, anyway, when it comes to the mumbo huts, uh, there's two of them in the world. One of them is actually a real mumbo hut, and the others are fake. If there's a minjo inside the mumbo hut. It's a real one, which means you don't want to go into it just yet. And if there is a Jinjo in the Mumbo Hut, that is going to be the fake Mumbo Hut. And uh, again, I'm not going to spoil too much about it until we actually get to that hut. But let's just say it's one of my favorite moments of this game. One of my personal top parts. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, whenever you are flying around the course of this world, uh, you'll occasionally come across these things. These are eyeball turrets. Uh, they'll shoot you out of the sky, and they do have a gin- a Jinjo? They do have a Jiggy inside of them. We will be dealing with them pretty much at the very end of the world, but, you know, watch out for them if you're flying around because they will shoot you out of the sky, and, uh, that's no good, as a certain blue mongrel would say, or blue marsupial- no, it's marsupial. What, what sort of animal does hedgehog climb? Well, a blue hedgehog, as a certain blue hedgehog would say, that's no good, what can I tell you? But, uh, Porcupine, that's the one. I knew I'd get there in the end. <laughs> uh, we aren't going to be bothering you with Humble Wumble right away. We just wanted to jump into here to get hold of the Jinjo quickly. Uh, you, I suppose you could give the Globo to Humble Wumble right now if you really saw chores. But, personally, nah. I'd much rather leave uh, doing things with Humble Wumble last in this world. So, moving on up here. Mary, Mary. Okay. This is the hardest mission in the entire game. The hardest mission. And actually, I was only, I was honestly con contemplating when I was recording this, doing this entire sequence live commentary, but I didn't end up doing it, and... 
I, to, I somehow managed to do this mission first try. Don't ask me how, because this mission, <clears throat> or this series of missions with her, because there's two of them, are just fucking stupid. They are stupid, because the AI on Canary Mary is, without any better word for it, broken. Like, you, if you recall back when we fought her in Glitter Gulch Mine, we had to mash the button and we won. In this one, don't mash the button. If you mash the A button, you will die. So what you basically need to do is sort of slowly trail behind Canary Mary until a certain point. And once you hit a certain point with her, then you start mashing the button. Like right now, as you can tell, I'm slowly, slowly speeding up for her in this first round. And uh, the first round... Is a uh, it's a little bit tricky, and if you don't know the right time to actually start mashing, you will will lose because uh, well she'll just shoot on ahead of you because she actually cheats and takes shortcuts that you cannot actually go to because obviously you're stuck on rails. But um, I'm making this look rather easy. Trust me when it comes to the second phase. Oh, the literal nightmares were had in the second phase of Canary Mary and. There is a very specific way to beat her that I will highlight as best I can because I couldn't figure out any other way to beat her other than use this strategy that took me a good hour or so to actually work out. Because, uh, she has rubber band AI. The rubber band AI is based on how quickly you move at the start of the, um, at the start of the whole mash button mashing process as well as the speed that you're going throughout the course of the button mashing so what you need to do is you need to start off by uh, delaying yourself and not pushing any buttons then slowly trail behind her as you slowly trail behind her then you need to wait for a very 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 specific point in the in the map to actually just mash the button and go freaking nuts because she she's stupid She's fucking stupid. This is the worst mission in the entire game. It is terrible because Canary Mary will go faster than you. If you go if you if you go past her at least once during the course of this um this sequence by here, which can basically be a glorified tour of the whole world, uh, you've lost. You have to stay behind her this entire time, which means you're going through this very monotonous, monotonous, slow progress, and if you screw up, you have to do it again, and again, and again, and honestly, this mission is just... It's awful. This is the single worst part of Banjo-Tooie, and there is nothing that I can say to defend it. There is nothing to defend. This is just an awful, awful, awful mission. I honestly do not like it, and it, it, it hurts your thumb as well, because not only do you need to s just mash the button at a certain point, you do need to keep pressing the the button at a steady rate, which means your thumb's gonna get tired. When your thumb gets tired, then you need to pause the game, let your thumb rest, unpause the game, then go again like mad. It's just, it's really not a fun mission. It's really not a fun time. And like I said, when I was recording, I am so glad that I did this first try. That didn't happen my test recording, my test run even, not my test recording, because uh, my test run of this took me two hours, give or take, you know? It's, it's a fucking nightmare. I do not like this race. It is tedious. In fact, the, the worst thing about it is, at the very beginning of this whole thing, it doesn't, it's not even a race. It got just slowly trailing behind her throughout most of it. It's only until a certain point where it becomes a race, and even then, you have almost frame perfect accuracy to start speeding up your button mashes. If you miss the tiny window, you've lost. If you button mash too early, you've lost. If you button mash a tad too late, you've lost. You need to button mash the exact opportune moment to beat her because her, her AI, like I said, is fucking broken. She will just speed past you like fucking. I don't know, like, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on cocaine. It's ridiculous, you know, ladies and gentlemen, but, uh, basically, the moment I say now, that's the point where you're gonna have to start button mashing like crazy because, uh, again, awful mission. Awful mission. Ah! It's giving me a hernia thinking about it. <laughs> Oi. 
we're actually coming up to the end of it right now, actually, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, basically, from the point when the camera sort of uh, turns up by you, when the camera changes to this angle, and you're about to come across by here, now start mash button, button mashing. And look how close this race would have been. And the thing is, if we button mash a bit earlier than that, she will go past you. She will speed past you even if you go past her and win. So you need to be frame perfect to beat this. It's, it's stupid. It's the worst mission in the game. Terrible, 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 terrible. I don't know what Rareware was thinking. You know, I will always pray, praise Rareware for being masters of game design. But I don't know what the hell they were smoking or drinking when they came up with this one. I mean, sweet Jesus, how the hell did they test it? With bugs! Like, I feel sorry for the poor QA guy who had to test this, mi this mission for bugs, because, good god, good god. But anyway, I digress with that, that is it for this part, so thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoyed, don't be sheepish people, and I'll catch you all next time as we continue the more exploration of Cloud Cuckoo Lands. So yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you after. Bye!